My name is Marley Jones, and this presentation is for my Art 201 class. I did my presentation on Gary Baseman. Gary Baseman was born on September 27, 1960. He is a 59-year-old American artist who studies history, heritage, and the human condition. He was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. Gary Baseman's parents, Ben and Naomi Baseman, were Holocaust survivors who were originally from Poland. They had four children, including Gary. Baseman used some of his parents' stories and experiences for his pieces. Here you can see one of his pieces where he says, I am traveling to the homeland of my parents. Baseman gets a lot of his inspiration from Warner Bros, cartoons, Mad Mag, and Disneyland and uses these for a lot of his creations. After he graduated from the University of California, he started dedicating all of his work towards establishing persuasive art. The goal was to blur the lines between fine art and commercial art and allowed him to become a median between different types of worlds. This piece is labeled The Door is Always Open and gives details about his persuasive art that he uses to create certain pieces. This one shows three different background settings and the two people in the image are created very differently. The woman with the red hair on the right is much more blurred than the person on the left who looks almost pixelated. Gary Baseman's artwork and pieces have had many successes and have appeared in many articles and company grounds. His pieces have appeared in the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, the Atlantic Monthly, the New Yorker, and the Rolling Stone. This is his piece that was in the Rolling Stone. Here's the game Cranium that he design the characters and artwork for. He also has had his pieces featured in corporate companies such as AT&T, Gatorade, Nike, and Mercedes-Benz. This picture is of the t-shirt that he helped design for the Nike company. This shirt was from the 1990s and sold for $100 and is now a very rare collector's item. Baseman uses a lot of the same characters on many different platforms. As you can see in the Nike picture, he used the same character that is in this picture right now, which is Toby and the Black Cat. Those are his two main characters, and he makes them in, very different, in many different variations in each piece that he does. Blackie the Cat was named after Baseman's own cat and has been a great influence on his work. Here's just one more picture to show Blackie the Cat. Toby was a, is said to be his alter ego, however, Toby was originally his childhood friend slash babysitter who he claims he was in love with. These two characters have said to be very distinctive for people to be able to recognize Gary's work on anything that he does. Gary Baseman mixes cartoon imagery with dark moodier themes with wide-eyed devils, nymphs, skeletons, and beasts. This way of work surprisingly pleased many people considering it was between such different moods. Audiences would enjoy the piece before realizing that it had a much darker meaning behind the color and the people in the artwork. I first noticed this in the picture when I realized the tree had no colors, no leaves, and no light. Neither do any of the other plants in the picture. Then I saw the man in red who resembles a grim reaper and the babies in his hands with X's instead of eyes. The last thing I noticed about the darkness of this picture were all the characters' faces. There will be one more picture after this slide to show it, but all the characters look like they have just looks of distress. Here you can see in this picture that he uses light blue and light pink tones to appeal to the picture before you realize that it has a darker meaning to it. Here's just one last picture to show the sort of background colors behind the creepy faces and the characters. As mentioned earlier, Gary Baseman's work was featured in The New Yorker in 2003. With these pieces that he does for other people, I think that his ideas cannot always be his own, so I think it is important to Gary Baseman and other artists to leave their signature on a project by doing something that he has trademarked on his own. In the picture below, it can be recognized that the faces in the picture are similar to that of many of the characters in Gary Baseman's personal paintings. Here's the piece that was in The New Yorker. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.